The Lord be with you. And with us Let us pray. Open, O Lord, our lips to praise thy holy name. Cleanse also our hearts from vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten our understanding and kindle our affection, that we may say this office worthily, attentively and devoutly, and may be counted worthy to be heard in the presence of thy divine majesty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, in union with that divine intention wherewith Thou didst offer praise to God on earth, we offer this service unto Thee. Our opening hymn is hymn number 484.
Before we start this morning, I want to thank Don, who brought in a face mask for me to improve my airflow. But I put my glasses on with the ish, I can barely read them. Oh. <laughs> small print. So, again, thank you for your generosity and your courtesy. But my glasses with the face shield, I can oh, who would have thought? Yes. Who would have thought? So, but I appreciate the courtesy. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, interesting times. Interesting times. And grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and weakness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought, at all times, humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet we chiefly ought to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Whereby I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, <clears throat> Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from our ways like lost sheep. We have fallen too much to the vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have not done the most things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises, declare them to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoned and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, <clears throat> and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and thou shalt do thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Let us hardly rejoice. 
page 466 in our Book of Common Prayer. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Here begin at the 21st verse of the 11th chapter of the Wisdom of Solomon. <clears throat> but thou hast mercy upon all. Excuse me. For thou canst show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt. And who may withstand the power of thine arm? For the whole world before thee is as a little grain of the balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things, and weakest at the sins of men, because they should amend. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. For never wouldst thou have made anything if thou hast hated it. And how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will, or been preserved if not called by thee? But thou sparest all, for they are thine, O Lord. Thou lover of souls. For thy incorrigible spirit is in all things. Therefore chasteneth thou them by little and little that offend, and warnest them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended, that leading their wickedness they may believe on thee, O Lord. Here endeth the first lesson. Thanks be to God.
Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as so though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard of being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more. Here in the Philistine. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is written in the 10th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, beginning with the first verse. Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the second verse. Glory be to you. Jesus said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went back and joined himself to a citizen of that country, 
and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. No, his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what those things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Sunday coming 
Peru, Grain Hall, uh, to worship the Lord. Our uh, sermon hymn is hymn number 570, first two. As a result, 
they suffered from a mighty famine. In other words, from spiritual hunger. And so ate with swine. That is, ate with the illusions of the demons. However, they repented and turned back towards the Father, who welcomed them with open arms, running out towards them to embrace them. This morning's parable is, in fact, a warning to the Jews. We can see this vividly portrayed in the icon of the parable, which, in the middle, which is usually in the middle of the church. There we see the Father showing love and forgiveness towards the repentant Son who lies at his feet, begging forgiveness. The elder son, however, is angry, full of bitterness and jealousy. You can take a look at the front of your bulletin and see that image. Perhaps we feel some sympathy with the elder son. After all, he never wasted his efforts. He remained loyal to the father. The problem is that the elder son's service was a form of slavery. He did not stay with the father out of love but out of self-interest, in expectation of a reward. This was not love freely given, but an obligation fulfilled in hope of the payment of the hiring. We can compare this with the attitude of the father. He instantly forgives all that the younger son, the pagan world, has done and says, let's make merry. This attitude of the father is not gloom, but joy. Now the elder son, on the other hand, is full of gloom and cannot bring himself to be joyful or to express love, because he has no love for his brother. The father says, all that I have is thine, and shares everything. The elder son wishes to share nothing, for he is locked up in pride and self-love. Indeed, the elder son does not want to share in all that the father has. Yet he wants to share in his wealth and his property, but he does not want to share in what the father has above all else, in his merciful compassion and love. Thus we are reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul, that though we may have all qualities, if we do not have love, then we are nothing. In this way, this parable has a meaning for us. We may have great wealth, but if we have no love, then all our wealth is worthless, and our lives, like the lives of so many very wealthy people, are futile and purposeless. We may have a beautiful house or car, but if we use them only to flaunt our riches and feed our selfishness, then they serve no purpose. Where there is no love, there is only the emptiness of futile vanity and the gloom of selfish pride. So, therefore, let us to make merry, for Christ the King of love makes joy even out of the most difficult problems, and all we prodigals are able to. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed as is most justly due, all might, power, majesty, dominion, and glory, world without end. Amen.
things like that. So we're hoping it wasn't broken. We're hoping it was just a, a, whatever it was. <laughs> you have anything? Anybody have anything they'd like to uh, to uh, add to the prayer list? Jason? Nope. I'm sure I'll think of something five minutes after the service. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear that uh, Jason and Lori's bees are doing well, so that, oh, that, that's a, an answer to a prayer of mine. Um, I think I sent out one time, emailed out the picture of Lori and all her, as he calls her, hazmat suit. So <laughs> it's nice to hear the bees all doing well. Okay, yeah. well, very good. Well, let's continue to pray for our country and our world and, uh, and uh, dealing with uh, the pandemic that we have here. Of course, uh, let's continue to pray for our police and first responders as they're dealing with some of the nonsense that's going on out there. And as we do every Sunday, let's also pray for the brave men and women who serve in our armed forces, protect our liberties and hard-won uh, rights around the world, and their families whose uh, sacrifice is just as tenable and just as real. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly 
Father, who hast blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us light and things, and give us light and strength, so to train them, that they may love whatsoever things are true and pure and lovely and of good report, following the example of their Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O holy God, thou art my record, how greatly I long after the flock thou hast put in my charge, that their love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that they might approve things that are excellent, that they might be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto thy glory and praise. Amen. Returning now to page 19, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thy unworthy servants to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all, particularly to those who desire now to offer up their praises and thanksgivings for thy late mercies of safety.
mercy of God, rest in peace.